good morning everyone today's topic for seminar is controversies related to terminal hinge access and its prostatic significance in occlusal rehabilitation these are the contents temporomandibular joint represents the fewest range of excursive of any uh, of any of the body joint the mandibular hinge axis controls the movements of the mandible and hence influence the contacting positions of the teeth correct maxillary mandibular relationships minimize occlusal adjustment in mouth during centric and eccentric movements so what are mandibular movements there are two types of mandibular movements pure rotational movements and translatory motion in pure rotational it takes place between the condyle and the articular disc whereas translatory motion it occurs between the articular disc and the roof of the glenoid fossa coming on to rotational movements it is the movement of the body around about its axis rotation occurs when the mouth opens and closes around a fixed point or axis within the condyles rotation occurs in the inferior cavity of the joint between superior surface of the condyle and inferior surface of the articular disc rotation of the mandible it can occur in three reference plane uh, around a point called the axis and they are horizontal axis of rotation that is opening and closing motion hinge movement is the only mandibular activity in which there are pure rotational uh, movements when the condyles are in the most superior position in articular fossa the mouth is purely rotated open axis around which uh, movement occurs is the terminal hinge axis second is frontal that is vertical axis of rotation mandibular movement around the frontal axis occurs when one condyle moves anteriorly out of the terminal hinge position with the a vertical axis on the opposite condyle remains in the terminal hinge position coming on to the third that is sagittal axis of rotation mandibular movement around the sagittal axis uh, occurs when one condyle moves inferiorly while other remains in the terminal hinge position coming on to translatory motions it occurs when the mandible moves forward as in the protrusion translation occurs within the superior joint cavity between the superior surface of the articular surface and inferior surface of the articular disc so what are border movements border movements when the mandible moves through a uh, outer range of motion reproducible uh, Uh, desirable limits results which are uh, called so called as border movements therefore uh, each of these planes have a border as well as a typical functional movements these are divided into types of so, uh, in three uh, movements the sagittal plane border movement and function and functional movements horizontal plane border movement and functional movements and frontal border and functional movement coming on to the envelope of motion the 3d space is circumscribed by mandibular uh, Uh, border movements within which all the unstrained mandibular movements occur Man coming on to the mandibular movements in sagittal plane the mandible will open along the hinge axis with the condyles rotating within the glenoid fossa the rotational movement with it will terminate at the terminal hinge axis position terminal hinge axis is the rotational movement that occurs from centric relation to the terminal hinge axis position the condyles are rotating completely within the glenoid fossa it is reproducible and Uh, and a consistent movement the maximum opening depends uh, displays uh, the most inferior position of the mandible the after after the patient is instructed to open his mouth wide when the mandible slides forward and the mandible uh, and the mandible and the maxillary anterior teeth are in the edge to edge relation the protrusive movement is said to be complete coming on to the posterior uh, opening border movement it occurs in two stage hinge hinging movement in the first stage the condyles are stabilized in their most superior position in the articular fossa in anterior relation the mandible can be rotated around the horizontal axis to a distance of only 20 to 25 mm as measured between the incisal edges of the maxillary and mandibular teeth in second stage that is maximum opening is around 640 to 60 mm uh, measured when between uh, measured between the incisal edges of the maxillary teeth and mandibular teeth the posterior movement of the condyle from the maximum open position to the maximum protruded position uh, produces eccentricity in the anterior border movement therefore it is not a pure hinge movement so when we combine the border movements all of these uh, of all the three planes we get a 3d space within uh, which the mandibular movement is possible it is called as envelope of motion and is given by the postulate in 1952 the envelope of motion is longest and widest superiorly and narrows down to a point 
near maximum mount okay position what is a hinge what is a hinge axis it is a horizontal axis around which the condyles rotate during movement during opening and closing movement up to a range of 15 to 20 mm according to gpd 9 it is necessary it is a imaginary line passing through the centers of the condyle when the mandible rotates in the sagittal plane it is also known as transverse hinge axis terminal hinge axis transverse horizontal axis transverse axis and hinge axis of mandible a pure rotational uh, rotation of the condyle takes place prior to the translation of the condyle it takes place in the first uh, 10 to 13 degree arch of opening and closing or during initial opening of 15 to 20 mm uh, the left and the right centers of the condyles exhibit pure rotation uh, rotational movements Uh, like centric relation, hinge axis is hinge axis hinge relation is stable, learnable, recordable, reproducible, and repeatable. Hence, it is used as an important reference in mounting cast in the articulator, so that the opening axis of the articulator coincides with the terminal hinge axis of the patient. Biological significance of the hinge axis uh, in fully edentulous patients with full complement uh, of teeth, the maximum intercuspation position is a position in which there is a maxillary and mandibular teeth are in the complete intercuspation. In dentate patient, the maximum intercuspation position is mainly guided by the proprioceptive signals which are present in the periodontal ligament of the teeth. Whereas in the case of edentulous condition, these proprioceptive signals in PDL are absent, hence the guidance mechanism is lost. The certain proprioceptive, uh, proprioceptive receptors present in the capsule of the temporomandibular jaw. These signals are activated only when the condyle is in the centric relation position or in the hinge position. Coming on to the importance of transverse hinge axis, start, it is the starting point of all lateral movement. When it is transferred to the articulator, opening and closing can be reproduced uh, because of opening axis is coincident with the hinge axis of the patient. It allows centric record in dented situation to accurately be mounted on an articulator. It permits change in the vertical dimension in the articulator. Coming on to the theories of location of hinge axis, there are four school of thoughts. First is absolute location of axis, the arbitrary axis, non-believers, and the split hinge axis. Absolute location of the axis, it, it, they believe that there is a definitive transverse axis and should be located as accurately as possible. Uh, they believe that with Facebook, uh, it is possible to relate maxillary cast to uh, transverse axis of articulator in the same relation ship as the maxilla related to the anatomic mandibular axis through the condyles. Path of closure on the terminal uh, hinge will be same as on the articulator as in the mouth. Hinge axis is a, a component of every masticatory movement and can't be disregarded. Hinge axis relationship of the articulator must be duplicated, duplicate of the hinge axis relation of the jaw or the mechanical reproduction of the jaw movements. The gnathoscope gnatholator now, House, Dentatus, Turner, Stewart, and Brexton Archon all, are all the all have one intercondylar shaft. However, these absolute conditions do not exist in the mandibular apparatus, which is symmetrical in the shape and the condylar uh, the condyloid process are joined at the symphysis with no connection with the condyles. And also the condyles do not lie in the common plane of orientation. The assumption of the single intercondylar transverse axis is therefore open to a serious question. Coming on to the arbitrary location of the axis, they believe that accurate location of the terminal hinge axis hinge position would be of some value, but it doesn't have enough value over arbitrary location to be worth the added effort. According to Cadrock, uh, the search of the search for the axis uh, in the uh, in addition to being troublesome, it is of no more than academic interest, for it will never be found to lie more than a few mm distance from the assumed center in the condyle itself. As, uh, is it, as well known, this may be determined by simple palpation or by following the convention of measuring a distance of about one centimeter anteriorly along a line drawn from the upper free margin of the tragus of the ear to the corner of the eye. This group fails to recognize that if the hinge axis of the articulator does not coincide with the hinge axis of the patient, the path of closure will not be seen. 
coming on to the uh, systematic review where the effectiveness of kinematic phase bow in enhancing occlusal equi equilibration in the fixed restorative treatment the aim, uh, the aim was to evaluate the occlusal discrepancy arising after mounting with arbitrary and kinematic phase bow in fixed restoration uh, they concluded that the kinematic phase bow transfer was more effective than the arbitrary phase bow transfer in minimizing the occlusal errors in the fixed restoration coming on to the non believers in the transverse axis location it is possible to locate the terminal uh, hinge position with accuracy transverse axis is theoretical but not practical beck claims that there are many uh, co compensating movements of the condyle other than the pure rotation and uh, that can and that these are the movement of the translation and side shift are integrate, integrated with the movement of rotation so concluding that the hinge movement of the mandible with its fragmentary movements cannot be repeated by opening and closing movements of an articulator which is about one axis only therefore an arbitrary hinge terminal hinge position could or would just be as accurate as located in the kinematic phase bow there was a study done for the determination of hinge axis the objectives were uh, whether there is a terminal whether there is a terminal hinge axis and if it is so whether or not only one axis exists coming on to the conclusion they in 57.2% of the subject uh, they, in their investigation there were more than more than one condylar hinge axis point was located on either of the both sides since multiple condylar hinge axis points were located the high degree of in, 